another one. Another one. Welcome back to another episode of Big Sticks. Guys, today is a real exciting day for me. I'm going to introduce you to my new kayak. I'm going to go over some of the specs about it and some of the upgrades and additions that I've made to it. So let's get to it. All right, folks. So here is my grand entrance into the pedal powered kayak game. This is the Pelican Premium Catch 110 HD2 cost me a little under a thousand dollars however those of you who are in the kayak fishing game know that there is a lot more costs associated with putting a fishing kayak together and that's why I chose to go with this one as opposed to getting a Hobie now don't get me wrong I would love to have a Hobie but this right here is my mophobie and what that means is this mofo be in my budget. So let's go over some of the things that I've put in this. Got the fish grips there, the lake troller, um, downrigger, the Garmin Striker 4, um, the Yak Attack Switchblade, the Yak Attack Cell Block. And make no mistake about it, after putting this together, I'm thinking that I'm going to add by subtracting, meaning I'm probably gonna get rid of that lead acid battery and the cell block and ditch about six or seven pounds hanging off of that one side of the kayak. I can't see myself being out there in the ocean with this, with additional weight like that hanging off the side. But you live and you learn. I'll probably end up going with a an aqua battery that weighs about one pound and maybe driving a hole in the side there and running the battery all the way back to my single storage hatch which i think is a benefit because uh i think the more holes you have in a kayak the more vulnerable it becomes and i like this particular kayak because it actually has foam flotation blocks on the inside of the hole and those flotation blocks to me are extra reassurances that i ain't finna sink for somebody that's new to fishing bigger water with a kayak, that is super important. Okay, so let's go over some of the things that I really, really like about this about this kayak. One was that it was cheap, um, but it's not necessarily cheap in build. Compared to the Hobie, sure. But um, in terms of its overall durability, I think this thing is gonna last. I, I do like the seat. Uh, this is... This is a way, way bigger, uh, way better setup than the, the Lifetime Tamarack Angler with the stadium seat in it. This seat here is incredibly soft. It's adjustable at different tension points uh, and it elevates me off the floor, which is gonna make it easier for me to stand. Um, you know, of course, I do like the pedal. Um, that's something different for me. I know for all you Hobie, Hobie guys, uh, this is nothing new to you. And some people are gonna think it's an inconvenience for me to have a kayak that doesn't have an instant reverse. I don't really care about that because the instant reverse that I had previous was a paddle. So no real big difference there for me other than the fact that this kayak gets to shine while I get to troll and pedal and I get to steer. That's something different because it's got a rudder. I also like that in the event I want to add an extra hatch, I have the capability to do so. But again, as I said before, holes in kayaks to me represents vulnerability and I ain't trying to be vulnerable. I do like that it comes with these, uh, these accessory tracks on both sides and also that it has three rod holders already, uh, flush mounts. It has a pretty deep deck. Um, this is bigger than what I'm accustomed to having. And then the one deep hatch in the back. Now, talk about some of the things that I don't like. I don't like that some things are riveted. Now, I don't mind that these are riveted, but I do mind that these are riveted, the handles. The handles are the things you're gonna use the most. And you will see that the things that is gonna support some weight all have, have screws, which I can appreciate because these actually need to support weight. But I would think that these handles are gonna have to support the weight of the kayak too. I do like 
that it's light. Uh, the boat itself is about 67 pounds and it's about 73 pounds with the uh, with the drive-in. So that while heavier than my previous kayak, this indeed, um, when talking about like larger um, roto molded kayaks, this thing is significantly lighter in that regard. And another thing that I like, uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that the color of this kayak and its, its pattern is different. It's called Amazonia. Um, at first I wasn't real hot on it, but you know, in true California fashion, we like to do things way different than everybody else, no matter how ridiculous it might seem. So I'm just gonna go ahead and name my kayak Killer Green. <laughs> and I guess I kind of forgot to mention this kayak actually enjoys a lifetime warranty on the hull. So that gives me a whole lot of peace of mind too. But you know, as with anything, I'm sure there's restrictions. Like if you start drilling holes and stuff like that, it's null and void, but I'll cross that road when I get there. If I get there. Oh yeah, look what else I got. I have two additional drives. Extra rods, fins, pedals, extra rudder control handles. Bet you don't get that with your Hobie. All right, so let's talk about some of the costs that's associated with this expanding my horizons and kayak fishing. Let's look at some of the additions that I've made to this thing and some of the costs associated with it. All right, so first we'll start with the Farmer John 3.0, $150. The water boots, $60. Wet socks, $18. The leak proof uh, backpack cooler, $35. Fish clip, $22. Lake troller, $70. Yak attack sail block, $60. Yak attack switch blade, $45. Garmin striker four, $110. The yak attack mount, I wanna say that was $36. The rail blazer uh, mount, I think that was $60 or $50, one of the two, either way. Uh, you got these, these little Scotty um, deck mounts right there. Those are like $12 each, and there's one over there too. I forgot to mention that. Fish grips, $20. Pliers, $18. The freaking paddle, $100. The most expensive purchase of them all was the Sea Tug. Um, kayak cart. I want to say that was somewhere in the neighborhood of like 130, but like after taxes, maybe 150 or so. Uh, I wish the sand track tires were available, but they weren't. And I hear this does okay on pack sand. Um, we're gonna find out firsthand. Oh, I almost forgot. We got the fish stick. That's like another forty dollars after taxes. The extension here, that's like $23. The, the actual rod holder, that's like an extra $20. So, you know, if I had to add it all up, I'm gonna go out on, on a limb and say I've probably spent an additional five to $600 on making this uh, kayak that I want to fish off of and, you know, expand my capability greatly over, you know, the, the, the typical Walmart entry-level kayak of a Tamarack Angler, which, you know, isn't a bad kayak in and of itself if you just want to do simple things on it, but I think I want to complicate my life a little bit. All right, folks, so right now I'm kind of laughing at myself, dude. I feel like a GPS in recalculating, recalculating, because after adding up all these things in my head, I'm going to venture to say that I spent probably an extra closer to $700 than five or $600 putting this kayak together. What I failed to mention is that I also bought a $120, what is that, VHF, UHF, dual band 
radio, a, a unit in radio, a whistle, a knife. That was like $20. All that stuff just sort of adds up. And what I'm learning from this kayak accessory game is that they charge you, they nickel and dime you literally. You have to buy the mounts because it doesn't come with the accessory piece you're buying. You just, you pay out the wazoo like repetitively and it gets annoying. I'm so glad right now I have everything I need to get started. So next video, folks, it's going to be out there on the water. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up my introduction to my brand new kayak today. Let me know what you think in the comments below, whether you think I wasted my money in buying this and I should have just held out for a Hobie, or if you think, hey, that's a great looking kayak and you'll be able to expand your capabilities greatly. And we look forward to seeing videos on it because that's my next goal is to get this out on the water and actually start seeing just how fishable this damn thing is. Until next time, folks. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And until next time, guys, big sticks out. Great. Look what just arrived prime while I was filming this. Another $60 accessory for my kayak. I don't know if this is any good, but apparently it's supposed to give me about eight hours at 1080p of nonstop recording time on my GoPro. This should be a welcome addition, and it's supposed to be, look, IP68 waterproof. I can live with that. We'll see if it really works. Mumu Outdoors uses it, so I'm going to use it too.